Hey there, and welcome to Inside Butler Football. I'm your host, Bree Seaver. The Butler football team played in their first home opener and game under the lights at the Butler Bowl this past Saturday with a dominant 42-13 win over nearby Franklin College. In a second, we'll be joined by Butler head football coach Jeff Boris to talk about last week's game and take a look at the games ahead. Stay with us on Inside Butler Football. Welcome you back to Inside Butler Football. I'm joined today by Butler head football coach Jeff Forrest. Coach, thanks for being with us. Glad to be here. So the team played in their first home opener, and they had about 4,000 people at the Butler Bowl. It was quite the atmosphere, and they certainly did not waste any time taking the lead. I mean, they came out in the opening drive, and they scored. Yeah. So can you talk about the team's great start to the game? Well, I think it all goes back to the week. And, um, you know, we prepared well, we were ready to play. I think with the night game, gave us a little extra time in preparation Saturday morning. So there was a focus and a intensity about how we went about pregame. And, um, you know, we came out with, uh, you know, we executed well. I think that was the, the biggest thing is uh, we executed well. We were able to, to convert some, some third down situations and a couple big plays allowed us to, to score quickly. Um, you know, Matt Lancaster certainly had quite a game. He threw for three touchdowns, rushed for two more. As a quarterback, he had 96 yards rushing. So what kind of things did you do to improve his running game throughout practice? Well, I think uh, every year you kind of look at your, your, your players and your group you have, and you're going to mold your system, kind of your scheme around the strengths of, of your players. And um, Matt is a good runner. I mean, he, he can run the football and is um, capable of, of doing those things so you know I don't know if we added anything but um, you know we, we did have a, a couple plays in the game plan what which allowed him to run the football and you know naturally um, you know in the course of a game through the passing game he's going to get opportunities to move around the pocket and and make yards with his feet also right so he more or less just utilized his strengths that's that's the plan with all of them really is to try to get the ball to your your, your playmakers uh, in space and what plays are they good at and right. um, try to take advantage of, of those. Now, I mean, Butler had a big lead at the half. You were up 27 to zero. Then you kind of kept the same momentum into the third. You scored less than five minutes and making the score 33 to zero. And then eventually Wade Markley took over as the quarterback. He played yeah. pretty well. He had nine, was nine for 10 on completions, 95 mm -hmm. yards. So how good does that make you feel as a coach knowing you have a solid second string quarterback that can come in and run the offense? I mean, we, we knew that back in the spring. I mean, um, Wade and uh, Lance were in a quarterback battle all the way up until the week of the Western Illinois game, and we had to make a decision. Uh, the, the hard part for, for a coach is you can't play two quarterbacks. You know, you got to pick one. But I think the, the best thing for us is not only the staff believes that we have two quarterbacks, um, you know, that can win, but the team believes that, the locker room believes that. And Wade has uh, always answered the bell. Um, and, the, and the thing with Wade is he prepares like he is the starter. And that's why he plays the way he does is he, he goes about his business during the week with the idea that, you know what, I'm not going to start the first play, but I don't know when I'm going to play. And when I get my opportunity, I'm going to be ready. And um, he, he's done that throughout his career and will continue to do that. Now, for most of the fourth quarter, um, you had a lot of the second string team in. Um, how vital is that experience for those players to get real game experience since they're not starters normally? I mean, it's, it's hard in practice to get those type of reps, you know. So, when, you know, it's rare to, you know, to get a game like this. But when you do and you can rotate maybe deeper than you normally would, um, you know, we play a lot of guys on, on defense and, you know, we rotate backs in and receivers and tight ends. So, you know, we, we play more than, you know, 11 on each side of the ball. But Saturday night we got a chance to, to play maybe some of those so some of those rotational guys that don't get a chance. And it's invaluable um, game speed and to p play against someone else. You, you, you can't simulate it in practice. So, you know, the way football is, it, it, at any point it's the next man up. Um, and that 
that game experience is going to be critical down the road. Absolutely. Now, as a coach, you guys were up by like 33 to zero, you know, in the third. Like, when you decide to take your your starters out, is that difficult? I mean, uh, I mean, it's it, it's a hard to say. I mean, you're always balancing whether the the game's in hand, um, you know, or do, do you got to keep playing. Do you want to keep guys healthy? Like we just talked about, do you give other guys an opportunity? So that that's always. Uh, uh, a tightrope walk to figure out when, when it is because you know you've been in a lot of games where you, you, you start taking them out too early you lose the momentum a play happens here and they start coming back and especially playing a team like Franklin that's so explosive on offense and you know has has won so many games over so many years you, you knew they weren't going to stop competing and so it's it's kind of a fine line but I, I think um, we're able to to get that accomplished at the right time Saturday night. Well, the Butler offense was pretty explosive. They they more than doubled the offensive output of Franklin. They had around like I think it was 583 offensive yards, and and Franklin had about 240 something. So, could you just describe about you know your team's offensive performance and how pleased you were with that? Well, I think we, we were pretty well balanced, which we we try to do. Um, you know, you have to be able to run the ball in college football to win mm -hmm. consistently. That's in our opinion. That's what we believe. Um, so um, Trey and uh, Don did a nice job running the football offensive line um, what was outstanding all night I mean they, they had some holes to run and pass protection was was clean and um, you know uh, Matt and Wade were able to distribute the ball to some receivers so that was uh, you know th that part of it was was good but it was all set up by the by the play of the defense yeah the defense did really well they just held they held Franklin to about 82 rushing yards so how pleased were you with them and their defense yeah, performance? I, I think there, there's no question the, the play of the defense has been uh, solid for eight quarters and um, you know they've really been you know we've we, we've deferred for two two games and put the defense on the field and you know that, that's been the plan um, and they've come through for us they've, they've been able to stop the run keep the ball in front of them you know do all the the, the the technique things that uh, that we want and so defensively I think we're off to to just as good or, or better start than we are offensively. Absolutely it was a great game. <laughs> it was certainly an exciting day at the Butler Bowl full of many firsts. Butler played in its first home game as well as its first night game under the lights. Our reporter Ari Castle has more. For over 70 years Butler football fans have watched their team play during the day and now for the first time the Bulldogs and their fans will enjoy a game under the lights. It will be exciting for the fans, but even more so for the players. But every time you get a special game like this, like under the lights, it's a little bit different. It always raises the energy. Um, so if anything, I say we're going to come out, we're going to play even harder. We're going to be more excited than usual. It's been a tough few years for the Bulldogs. Two years removed from winning the Pioneer League, the Butler coaches and players have put in a lot of work this offseason. There's a new energy that's surrounding the team. Everyone's just hoping this new energy can translate from the practice field to game time. Associate Athletic Director of Development Bill Lynch likes this team. I went over uh, last week and saw him play at uh, Western Illinois. And so we were playing a, a Division I FCS uh, school, fully funded scholarship-wise. And obviously we're a non-scholarship football program. And, and uh, you know, we had the ball down on the goal line with a chance to tie it up and go into overtime. And, and, uh, but... I, I, I like the way we played on both sides of the ball. I think uh, Coach Boris and his staff do a great job. So I think it's going to be a good year. Lynch, also a former Butler quarterback, explains the decision for the night game was also for the fans. I think uh, make it a little bit more convenient for everybody. And uh, because, uh, you know, not only for the students, and that's, you know, first and foremost, but they're here on campus, so uh, the travel isn't difficult for them. But those that do have to travel, uh, don't have to leave maybe so early in the morning and and uh, can do some of the other things that they'd like to do during the day. And in the Indianapolis community, the, maybe some of the non-traditional Butler people have a chance to bring their kids out uh, for a night game after they've done their own kids' activities during the day. For Inside Butler Football, I'm Ari Castle. All right, we're going to take a look at some of the highlights from this week's game. Um, you know, right here we have um, Butler quarterback Matt Lancaster completing a pass to wide receiver Brendan Shannon for a 33-yard touchdown. This was on the opening drive. Can, can you go a little bit more in depth about the play and how Brendan was able to get open? Well, I mean, it's a quick game pass that uh, off a little play action. Matt does a nice job of uh, 
recognizing the pressure off the edge and uh, Brendan sits in the hole there and catches it now Saturday night over half of Brendan's yards were after contact I mean he, he's an athletic explosive player that you know, can make some yards after contact it was a good downfield block to help finish it and here's quarterback Matt Lancaster rushing he had a, like 95 or 96 rushing yards I mean can you talk about his performance in this play in particular well I mean th this one's all set up um, by the offensive line, they kept the pocket clean all night, which allowed Matt to, to look downfield. Um, Well-covered route, so Matt was able to get out. And again, a downfield block by Derek O'Connor helped him get to the corner and uh, get in the end zone. All right. We'll be back with more after this to take a look at next week's game. Stay with us. Back here on Inside Butler Football. So looking forward to this week's game, team's got a bit of a road trip. You're going to New Hampshire to play Dartmouth for the first time ever. Um, this is actually Dartmouth's first game. They were 5-5 five and five last season. They're returning about nine starting guys. As a coach, like what kind of preparation and research do you have to do on this team since you're not as familiar with them? I think uh, the, the preparation is, is, is always about yourself. And so whether you're playing a league opponent that you play every year or a, a team like Dartmouth that you know very little about. I mean, it, it, it goes back to, you know, scouting yourself and your tendencies and going back to the fundamental techniques of the game and getting, you know, y yourself ready to go that way. Mm -hmm. And then I think, you know, whatever plan you come up with, it's, it's you know, always, coaches always talk about their game plan. It's just a pre-game plan. When you get in the game, you know, you got to be able to adjust and move on. And I think that's the biggest thing yeah. with teams that you're not as familiar with is the, um, you know, the, the, the drive to drive and halftime adjustments and you know your classroom on the sideline being able to make those adjustments um, when you're not quite as familiar with what you're doing so you, you got to have great communication on game night between coaches and coaches players right. and coaches to to get that accomplished now this is Dartmouth's first game you've already played two games do you think that gives you an advantage going into this game this weekend I don't know the uh, I think the the team with the advantage is always the one that prepares the best mm -hmm. and, and and comes out ready to to go off the start, which you know they will, you know, an exciting atmosphere for them back on back in school and night game, the same things that we had here, you know. So, so all the advantages you can say from having a, a game or two under your belt, they have they have quite a few on on their side with with us having to travel out there in the atmosphere that they're going to provide uh, for their home venue. So, I mean, I, I think all the, those things, you know, kind of work themselves out in the wash, and, and you got to be ready to play, play after play, and compete for 60 minutes. What kind of things do you expect that Dartmouth will do well that might, you know, pose a challenge to the team? Well, I mean, it's hard to say. Like you said, yeah. we just got done talking about not knowing yeah. them very well. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know that they've, they, they've been proved under Coach Tevens. He, he is a, a great, great football coach and has a great staff. So they're, they're going to be ready to go. There's certain things that, that uh, we understand they like to do, and, and they're going to be really good at them. They're going to be sound in fundamentals, um, and they're gonna, uh, their special teams are going to be um, – sharp they're they're, they're going to play field position they're going to you know take advantage of opportunities all the things that we preached our guys we, we know for a fact that they're going to do um, they're going to be ready to go and play with some emotion and passion so it's a heck of a, a challenge we have ahead of us but one we're looking forward to going out there and playing in ivy league stadium and competing that way i know a lot of our guys have you know looked at ivy league schools uh, out of high school and you know maybe thought that direction at one point so you know they're excited to, to go out there and and um, you know, compete on that, that in that atmosphere. Yeah, it'd be a nice change of pace. Yeah. Um, so now, although Butler played a really great game last week, I mean, you're always looking to make improvements. What mm -hmm. do you think is something that's crucial to, um, for them to improve upon this week in practice so that they could get a possible win against Dartmouth? Well, I, th I think every time you go back and you you look at the tape and you, you, you we just got to be a little bit more detail oriented on you know our assignment. We we could be we could be a little sharper on some of the things we did offensively and defensively as far as our. Our, our, our discipline and reading keys and getting our right spacing and, and, and things like that and um, you know we're gonna we're gonna keep harping on it we got to improve on special teams I mean we, we again didn't ha make enough momentum plays on special teams and create field position changes and we, we had too many breakdowns that way so that'll continue to be an emphasis for us moving forward all right well, well thank you coach for joining us on our second episode of inside well, Butler football I we appreciate it. it appreciate your time this will do it for the, this week's episode of Inside Butler Football. We thank you for watching.